Hello everyone, it's Kingsley and Kathy back in your home again at the beginning of another week. So it's wonderful to be with you once again. Thank you to those of you who joined us last night on our live session. We had a great time together and it's a privilege to be joining together, being part of each other's lives and taking communion each day. Kathy's going to read from Acts of the Apostles this morning. Chapter 6. And Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and signs among the people. And then there arose some from what is called the synagogue of the freed men, disputing with Stephen. And they were not able to resist the wisdom and spirit by which he spoke. Then they secretly induced men to say, we've heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and God. And they stirred up the people the elders and the scribes, and they came upon him, seized him and brought him to the council. They also set up false witnesses who said, this man does not cease to speak blasphemous words against this holy place and the law. For we've heard him say that this Jesus of Nazareth will destroy this place and change the customs which Moses delivered to us. And all who sat in the council, looking steadfastly at him, saw his face as the face of an angel. I have been reading through just the whole story of Stephen today, and I find it amazing. I think when we were younger, do you remember back to when you were younger? We all were a bit younger, weren't we? In fact, we were talking this weekend about 40 years since we met at Cliff College. Kathy put some pictures on from 40 years ago and it doesn't seem that long ago but it is a long time. But when we're younger and we're starting out you know there's part of the whole enthusiasm of being young you know a teenager we have a sign outside Jemima's room she's not a teenager anymore but the sign is still there that says ask a teenager while they still know everything and the, you know when you're young young people have a great ability to see everything that can be done and to take the world and a lot of movements have been led by young people the modern missionary movement really was started off by a lot of young people the student missionary missionaries and it's it's a wonderful thing to be young and be full of enthusiasm but when you get older you realize well maybe you're not just as important as you thought you were when you were younger and that can be a very liberating thing the reason I say that is when I read this story Kathy read the story of Stephen his face shone like the face of an angel he sees the Lord in the next chapter at the end of his sermon he sees the Lord sitting at the right hand of God the Father and that's what made the people rush at him and, and ultimately stone him to death they laid their cloaks at the the feet of a young man called Saul who became Paul the greatest missionary that ever lived. But this guy, Stephen, he was chosen as one of the seven deacons. He was full of the Holy Spirit. He, was, he, he knew the word of God. He did miracles, and yet he was called to wait on widows and orphans. He was an amazing young man. And when you read through the sermon that he preached, I think probably it is the greatest sermon in the Bible. I think he was the most gifted young man. I think had he lived, he would have been the most talented young man, probably one of the greatest leaders that had ever lived. But somehow here, God allowed him to die. And it shows us just how God is, as he often introduces himself, the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. Individuals aren't really that important. We think we are, but we're not actually. It's the purpose of God that's important in reaching the world. For God so loved the world. And when we're younger, when I was younger, I thought I was going to change the world. And maybe some changes have come, but actually... It's not my choice, it's God who will choose and it's God's plan that ultimately is the most important. And he chose to take Stephen home. He chose to take him away even though he could have been the greatest preacher that ever lived. Isn't that amazing that he chose to do that? And what I want to share with you is this today, is that God's in control and he's looking after your life. He's with you in your home and he's totally in charge COVID-19 is in charge. The enemy's not in charge. No person's in charge. The government's less in charge than it ever has been. But God is in charge and we can trust him completely today. So Kathy's going to read from Matthew 26. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body. Then he took the cup and gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, 
drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. But I say to you, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. It says, until that day I drink it with you. So for Jesus, death was only a gateway. It was only a step into returning to his father. So he was promised them, we'll have this drink again. We will drink it again in the kingdom. So whatever happens, I'm in control. God's in control. So isn't that wonderful? So let's take our, our bread today, our, our cracker as we have. We break it remembering Jesus' body that was broken for us. And we can eat together. Pause the video if you need to go and get prepared. But let's eat together remembering that Jesus gave his life for us and he's totally in control. Let's eat. Let's take the cup together. He won't drink it again until he drinks it with us and you. The marriage supper of the Lamb, we will be there. The Church of Christ will be there celebrating with Jesus. And until then, we remember each day that he gave his life for us. Let's drink together. Let's pray together today. And we pray for you that God would bless each one as we lift our friends to you, Lord, today. And we lift our countries to you today. And we say, Lord, be Lord of our lives. Thank you for Stephen. Thank you that he was faithful, a young man with such a future. And yet you decided to take him home. Lord, we don't understand many things that happen, but we do know this, that your Bible says that our times are in your hands. And so we choose to trust you today. Bless our folk, Lord, those who are on their own, those who are facing lockdown. Lord, I pray, keep them safe and let your presence be with them and help each one of us to trust you today in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I wonder if Stephen would have sung this song if it had been written back then. It says... O oh, happy day that fixed my choice on thee, my Saviour and my God. Well may this glowing heart rejoice and tell its raptures all abroad. High heaven that heard the solemn vow, that vow renewed shall daily hear, till in life's latest hour I bow and bless in death a bond so dear. Oh, happy day when Jesus washed my sins away. Wonderful. Well, God bless you this day. I pray it's a happy day. We pray it's a happy day for you. We'll see you again tomorrow. Bye -bye. Bless you.